outside the LSU locker room. Gordy Rush, Ronnie Ranch, Jacob Hester, and uh, let me ask you, Jacob, first, Clyde Edwards Alaire, you've been the leader of the bandwagon for him, so that's why I'm going to come to you. Over 250 yards of uh, total offense by Clyde tonight. Does LSU get two players in New York? <laughs> I mean, look, he, he's up for the Doak Walker. There's no doubt about that now. He was a little under 100 yards as far as the SEC leading rushers. He has 188 yards on only six carries here tonight. He has an 88-yarder one yard farther than my longest run at LSU. But if anybody does, I'm glad Clyde Edwards Elair did. He continues to impress. And you mentioned it. I mean, 250 total yards. I mean, he's catching the ball. He's doing everything he has to do. We all know that this LSU offense with these receivers, with that Moss, with Joe Burrows, dynamic. But when you have a running back like that, when you can just hand it off to him and you know you're going to get positive yards, it brings an even farther dimension to the offense. It's truly impressive what Clyde's been able to do in the biggest games of the year. Beat goes on, Gordy, for this LSU offense, over 600 yards total offense. Joe Burrow, another 300-yard game, another three touchdowns, chase over 100 yards. I mean, it's just – it never gets old. It, it doesn't get old. And, you know, what's not going to get old either is you're going to get everybody's best shot. Arkansas came in off the open week. Obviously, they went through an emotional time with the firing of their coach. They came for, for a quarter. They played hard for a quarter. They gave LSU a couple different looks. LSU settled in. They played their football on offense, and they took off. Mo Hampton got a chance to start at safety, the true freshman baseball football player. And uh, with, with the lack of depth that LSU has in that secondary, how would you think he played? I thought he played outstanding. He played free safety. And that allowed, uh, allowed Jacoby Stevens to go play on the outside linebacker, nickel, strong safety slot. And Hampton was really impressed with his pursuit angles, feeling inside out as a free safety. Really fundamentally sound for a young guy. LSU uh, kind of accomplished what it wanted to, right? Stayed healthy, got the win, was able to rest a number of people and get ready for what will be a tough A&M team. Yeah, you got some young guys in involved in the game plan as well. I mean, you got Miles Brennan out there just to throw a couple passes, just to get back comfortable being out there on the field. Uh, John Emery had a long touchdown run. That Those things can go a long way, and you never know. Three weeks ago, if I would have said Mo Hampton would have been the starting free safety on this team, you would have called me a liar because you never know. You never know when it's going to be your turn. You never know when you're going to have to have that young guy step up in a big moment. So these games are important to get those guys that kind of confidence. LSU punches its ticket to uh, to Atlanta. Now they go for, you know, the perfect regular season. Uh, Texas A&M played Georgia close today. I mean, they're, they're, I'm surprised their offense – isn't uh, catching up to what maybe looks like a pretty decent defense. Well, I'll let you talk. Why don't you break down? You've seen A&M on offense a little bit, but I'll tell you this. LSU's not going to look past Texas A&M. Right. After last year, the seven overtime game, all the theatrics, it's a rival. So I think that the LSU's going to be really excited to play Texas A&M. You've seen more of them on film than I have. Yeah, why is this A&M team, I guess, not doing offensively what it did last year? Well, they had kind of caught up because they're really struggling to run the football. And we talked about it on LSU Game Day Live. Travion Williams was the leading rusher in the SEC with 1,800 yards a year ago. Everybody kind of forgot about that in the offseason. It was the talk about Kelamon and the receivers. It's hard to replace 1,800 yards. Corbin, the running back, was supposed to be a guy that could have success. He gets hurt for the year. Their second string guy gets hurt for the year. Isaiah Spiller's a freshman now. He's had a lot of success of late. Didn't have it as much today against George. That's a really good defense. But they don't. They hadn't really ran the football like they like to. And Jimbo likes play action pass. He likes to run the football. Those are his two MOs. And when you can't do those things, you start to find yourself trying to do things that you're not really great at. So this offense has struggled. They found their way there in the middle part of their schedule against easier competition. Georgia kind of came back to earth a little bit today, and they struggled. One final thing. I'll let you have this thought, Gordy. You know, the, the rivalry between LSU and Texas A&M. Obviously, we know about the LSU-Alabama rivalry. Extra juice now with, obviously, the AD, Scott Woodward, being here. But also last year's seven overtime game and recruiting, right? Well, not only that, we had the incident at, at the, you know, the handshake, if you want to call it whatever it was. I, I just is a own. lot, right? And, you know, Texas A&M decided to put the score on cups. I mean, we go on and on. It was a one-sided rivalry. And I think what Jimbo did really well a year ago, they finally became a physical football team since they entered the SEC. And, and that made it a rivalry. LSU was just so much more physical the first couple of years when Kevin Sumlin was there. And I think that's changed it. So I think them coming back here, a revenge game, it, it's a rivalry now. Well, it's going to be an outstanding uh, football game right after the turkey holiday on Thursday. For Jacob Hester, Gordy Rush, I'm Ronnie Rance. Let's go back to the studio.